What is a fork join pool? Fork join pool is very similar to executor service. If you're new to executor service, I link my previous videos in the description below and I highly recommend that you go watch them first. If you're already aware of what is executor service, let's recap a bit. Executor service is, is about having a thread pool which stores the set of tasks that you submit externally and those tasks are stored in some form of data structure typically a blocking queue and then you have a particular set of threads so these threads they take the tasks from the blocking queue from that data structure they execute it and they go back again to that data structure pick up the next task and so on and so forth until there are no longer any tasks in that blocking queue if instead of runnables you're using callables which is a way to return a value of a particular task that you're submitting to a thread pool similar to executor service it will return you a set of futures and using the futures you can get the value which is computed for that particular task right so in these two aspects fork join pool is exactly the same as executor service you submit the task execute the task and optionally it get the return value from those tasks how is it different than an executor service it is different in two ways the first way is it deals with tasks which produce its own subtasks and this is also known as fork join so it is optimized for the kind of problems where the tasks can produce more subtasks okay what i mean by that is let's assume there is a main task which is a big task which is uh, computationally very intensive you can break them down into multiple subtasks so here you are breaking them down into three subtasks subtask 1 2 and 3 and each of them can be computed or solved individually and if you have a cpu which has more than one cores and in today's era we typically have cpus which four cores or eight cores and so on and so forth so you can potentially have the subtasks run on separate cores and all the subtasks can be run parallelly all at once so all these subtasks run parallelly they find their own results and all those results are then aggregated or joined or added to find the final result of this main task right so there are two operations involved first operation is forking or splitting the task into multiple slub tasks and the second operation is about joining the results of all the subtasks into a final result and that is why this kind of operation is known as fork join operation to take an example of a fibonacci sequence uh, if you don't know what it is it's a simple sequence of numbers where every number in the sequence is an addition of previous two numbers in the same sequence so if you pick any number it's just a addition of the previous two numbers so if you want to find the Fibonacci sequence n, uh, if it's less than or equal to 1, then the sequence is of course the same. So if n is 0, Fibonacci sequence is 0. If n is 1, sequence is 1. If n is greater than 1, then the Fibonacci sequence is addition of two previous numbers. So in this case, you can create two subtasks. First subtask, find the Fibonacci of n minus 1. And subclass 2 is find this Fibonacci sequence of n minus 2. Right? You solve them individually. This can be done parallelly. Once you solve them, you can add those two numbers and find this particular Fibonacci sequence and return that number. Right? It's a very simple algorithm. And this is an example of fork join algorithm. If you want to find the Fibonacci sequence of 4, you would find the Fibonacci of 3 and 2 within the fibonacci of 3 it will say find the fibonacci of 2 and fibonacci of 1 so these so f4 created its own subtasks f3 and f2 f2 can create its own subtasks of f1 and f0 similarly f3 can create its own subtasks f2 and f1 so there can be a recursion or recursively each subtask can produce its own subtasks so in this case we have we can have a main task which can create three subtasks they themselves can create two subtasks each and then you have to join all the results to find the final result yes uh, so the algorithm becomes very simple take the main task 
split it into smaller tasks uh, it depends on the problem how many subtasks that you want to create uh, wait for all these subtasks to complete once you have the individual results join all of them aggregate them and then return the result that's the first way folk join pool is different from executor service the second way is folk join pool has pearl thread queuing and a concept called work stealing so let's take the same diagram that we saw earlier this is the executor service right folk join pool is the same thing a common blocking queue for storing the task and a set of threads which will pick the tasks from that blocking queue uh, let's zoom in a little bit let's remove all the other components so this is the same diagram a few of the components are removed uh, let's rotate the threads horizontally okay let's remove the other threads i have only one uh, only two threads thread zero and thread one and uh, they take the tasks from the common external submitted queue okay so far this is exactly the same as executor service but here each of the thread has its own queue and this type of queue is called deck and it's a short form for double ended queue so let's imagine that a thread is executing a particular task so when you do a fork when you try to split that task into multiple subtasks all those subtasks are not stored in the common queue at the top they are stored within that thread's own double ended queue locally okay so this task produced three subtasks all of them are stored within this thread's double ended queue this thread's local queue and that is how it becomes very easy for this thread to pick the tasks that it itself created and start solving even those subtasks so now every thread that is executing in your thread pool in your folk join pool has its own double ended queue to store all the subtasks that it creates you don't have to worry about getting the tasks from the external queue you can keep picking the tasks from your local queue and keep executing them and since you are only touching your own queue you don't have to worry about synchronization except there is a corner case which we will talk about later and the third part is scheduling since the threads are always busy there need not be context switches between multiple threads so since if a task produces a lot of a uh, lot of subtasks and all of them are stored in a single queue the thread can be busy on that single core and keep on picking tasks and keep executing them but let's consider this scenario there is a thread called thread 1 which produces a lot more subtasks than thread 0 there will come a point in time when thread 0 will have no tasks to finish it is already done taking all the tasks from its own local queue and there are no tasks in the main common queue also but thread 1 since it produces a lot of tasks uh, there are still four or five tasks remaining to be executed in this case the thread 0 can say okay let me help you out or let me just steal the tasks from thread 1 so thread 1 is picking the tasks from the front side of the queue the thread 0 which is the thief will steal the task from the back of the queue so that concept is called work stealing this is very logical because now we are distributing the workload so if one thread is idle it is not doing anything it can help other thread out and reduce its workload right and this concept is called work stealing so to summarize folk join pool exactly the same as executor service internally it just uses a double ended queue for each of the threads and all the subtasks that each thread produces they are all stored within their own double ended queue right so t0 will store all the subtasks within its within its own queue t1 will store in its own queue and so on and so forth now let's talk about how to submit these tasks since it's very similar to executor service of course you can do the same things that you can do with executor service so you can uh run your runnables and callables in the same way as before no changes here okay the change is if you want to work with folk join task the specific kind of task that we are speaking about all along then you have to use these special methods so you can do an execute 
or invoke or submit based on what is it that you're trying to achieve right uh, ignore this column for now we'll talk about it when we are actually looking at the code for folk joint task so folk joint task is a class built internally to help you create the kind of task which will produce a subtask right just to recap a bit this is what we are trying to achieve and this is what a sample folk joint task looks like in java so we create a task called fibonacci we create a class called fibonacci uh, which extends this recursive task recursive task is a very thin wrapper on top of folk joint task so for all intents and purposes just assume this is a folk joint task you have to override a method called compute uh, just like before in the algorithm we, we said if n is greater less than or equal to one return n we are doing the same if not then we are creating this new task same as this task we are creating new task for n minus one and we are creating another task called n minus two and we are forking those both the tasks so we are saying okay there's a new subtask here and new subtask here and you're saying now join these both tasks join method will actually wait for those two subtasks to finish get the result and then go ahead and do the addition and return the result but for the folk join pool to be effective to perform really well you have to ensure that your code within the compute method that we saw does these things first it should avoid any kind of synchronization it should not use any shared variables it should not do any blocking io operations so you are trying to make a single pure function which are completely isolated and if you think about it it's a little logical because now you can ensure that your thread can keep picking the sub keep creating subtasks and keep executing the subtask as quickly as possible without having to worry about synchronization or context switching or whatever so if you do not do this it will still work but your performance will be degraded so to have optimal performance you have to follow these guidelines and since folk join task is it actually extends future class so it has the same methods that you would expect so you can do a get method call to get the value of the task uh, you can do a cancel to cancel the task and you can check the status of the task using is cancelled and is done so folk join pools are typically used for any kind of problems which requires you to divide your problem into multiple sub problems and solve them effectively so it can be used in sorting it can be used in matrix multiplication uh, best move finder for a game or tree traversal so that's it for folk join pool it was a very basic if you want me to cover any specific aspects of folk join pool please let me know in the comments and uh, that's it for now see you in the next video thank you for listening